everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike Heading here, coming to you today with another little mini lesson. This time we're going to talk about some exercise we can use on the second and first strings to kind of create a harmonized scale. And then I'm going to show you some roles you can use, some songs you can use it in, and how to incorporate it into your backup. What's cool about this idea is it's movable, so once you get it down, you can use it in any key you want, and I'll show you even a minor version, so if you got a minor chord song that you can use it in. All right, so this is a really helpful little technique, not only to get your fingers moving, it's a good warm-up exercise, but it's a great thing you can incorporate into some real songs that you've been playing. All right, here we go. I'm going to break the whole thing down right now. All right, so first let's start with the scale we need, and we're going to we're going to play all the notes on our second string. We're going to start up at the 8th fret, so this is the G major scale. We're going to play it all on one string on the second string for now. So we're playing 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, then 13, 15, 17, 19, and 20. So 20, 19, 17, 15, 13, 12, 10, 8. So you're either going up a whole step or a half step. Okay, so now that we've got the scale on one string, we need to add our harmony note on the first string, okay? So I'm going to play the notes together. So we got 8, and then we got 9, and I'm using my first and third finger. Okay, then we're sliding up to 10 and 10. And I'm letting my second finger take over of my left hand. So we got second finger and third finger. So I went from 8 and 9 to 10 and 10. Then 12 and 12, keep the same shape. Then 13 and 14, go back and let you use your first finger again. Then 15 and 16, same shape. 17 and 17, let your second finger take back over. 19 and 19, keep the same shape. And then 21 and 21, you can switch back. Okay, so a little faster. Okay, so you, I, I recommend using those fingerings so you kind of keep that same shape. Because what's cool about this is once you get the, once you get the pattern down, you can use it in any key, so you can do it in C. You can do it in D. So it's just a pattern, so keep use those same fingerings so then when you move it to a new key, it still feels, you know, familiar. So first thing you gotta do is you just get familiar with the position, so you can just, you know, jump around them without even doing a roll at first, you know. You, know, you can just practice jumping around between different ones. You know, you can do something like a simple forward roll. Starting on the second string with my thumb. Then I'm doing five, two, one. I do that twice. And then your thumb comes back down to the second string and starts it over. And then I'm gonna, so then I'll do one of those for each position. Practice that, you know, moving that around with a roll. So not too hard. Once you, you know, you're you're just using that same roll every time. So more importantly than just going straight up and down the scale with that roll, you know, good practice, but very rarely in music do we just go straight up and down the scale over and over again. So you got to practice making different jumps, you know, so something like this. since 
you've already made the adjustments. What's cool about this idea is that you've already made the adjustments. All these notes and the harmonies that we're playing, you've already modified them to fit into G major. So all your notes are going to work. So as long as you end on the right note, the, the, the lick is going to make sense because you've, you've already modified it to fit the key that you're in, okay? So that's a basic roll you can do. You know, it doesn't really matter what roll you do. Any, any kind of thing with the second string will work. You can forward reverse roll. It's a good one to practice your speed and, and you know, keep using the same fingers. What's cool about this is I'm using my third finger as kind of my anchor finger. And I'm sliding that one, keeping that one down to keep a little bit of the tones going. What's also cool about this is you can actually go this way with the scale too. So, so pretend you're up here. This is our high G. And then we go down. So we can actually do that right here too. So we're on G. And then keep your pattern. We run out of room there, but you could keep going down. So eventually you can keep going down, but so you can do something like that too. You know, as a way to kind of get back down. And like I said, you've already made the adjustments to keep it the notes within the correct key. So you know you're safe just kind of rolling on those notes. just an easy way to walk back down to a, to a G or walk down from a high position. You know, so a good easy way to get back down the neck or else, you know, go back up or go up the neck that way too you could do. You know, something like that. I'm just working these positions. It's, okay, so now let me, let me show you some ideas on where you can actually use that stuff. Once you get, you know, it's a good warm-up exercise to just practice rolling around and that kind of thing or, or pinching, you know, just working on your ear training. But let's let's kind of apply that to a song because that's the best way to take something out of your practice routine and work it into kind of your real life playing. So if you've done some basic kind of scrugs up the neck banjo, you probably already know this this position, you know, there's the there's that kind of thing. And you've probably already transferred between this position and this position. You know, if you've done something like Ro Lonesome Road Blues, you know. You know, something like that, where you're already, you're transferring between those two positions, you know, and just using a slide. You know, that's another lick you can use. Um, another roll that works really good with this position is the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. That's a good roll. So I'm doing index on the second string, then my thumb's coming up to the second string, and then middle first string, and then T I M, and then one more thumb. So it's index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb. So that's a good roll because you know you can kind of emphasize that second string. So that's some Scrug songs that use that idea if you've played Ground Speed. Another one that uses that is Home Sweet Home in C, you know, if you do the B part. So, you, you know, I'm not playing note for note like Earl does, but he uses that position. So that's in C. So let's try it in C once. Here we go. We're going to use that same pattern. So we're starting down here at 1 and 2 in our C. We're going up to three and three, five and five, six and seven, eight and nine, ten and ten, twelve and twelve, and then thirteen and fourteen. So we can do that same thing, you know. Kind of a cool idea if you're working on a new song that you don't know or let's say you've got an extended section of C and you want to make it a little more interesting you can use some of those ideas to, to walk around 
So think of it as positions. Don't worry too much about what roll you're doing. And don't even worry too much about if the fifth string works or not right away. You know, the fifth string's not going to work in every key. We might have to make some adjustments. But for now, when you're first starting out, just use the fifth string, even if it sounds a little bit funky. In C and G, it'll sound fine. But in other keys, it might, it might sound a little dissonant. You know, when you're first starting out, just work on it as a position and you can always make the adjustments of the fifth string later once you've got the position down. So let's take one more song, Here's You Are My Sunshine, let's figure out how we can work it into that. So instead of doing... You know, something like that with an open strings and single string in it, you could do some harmonies. Here. Two more things you can do real quick. One thing you can do is use it as an intro. So if you're you, you want to get to this position right here, you could walk down chromatically. Just walk down 12 and 12, 11 and 11, 10 and 10, and then 8 and 9. Kind of similar to the Dear Old Dixie intro, but we're just using a harmony. Yeah, so just those positions, we're just working between those. You know, so, so any of these ideas, move them around, so try it in C. Same idea, you know, basically the same right hand. Okay, that's, that's kind of a cool idea you can use. You can use that as a little intro or use it for backup. Another backup lick that uses that idea is that. So you can start. Once you've got those positions down, you can start using that Scruggs kind of boogie woogie lick. Another cool thing you can do is once you once you got the position down, you can start using your other fingers to go up and down to other notes. So let's use our pinky. So instead of going completely up into that position, let's just use our pinky to grab that note. Now let's go up to the next position. So you're using your pinky to grab the next higher note from the next position up to give you even more licks, you know, in your one position. So instead of just being able to play two notes, now we can play three, or eventually we can even do four. on where, you know, once I'm working out of a position, where can I now grab other notes that are going to give me even more sounds? Um, you know, just like you've done in your chords, you always want to experiment taking on and off different notes and, and, you know, where can I easily take on and off notes to give me some new sounds without having to move around a whole bunch? That's a cool thing you can do. So something like this you could do. So that's really cool because you can get these moving lines where you you almost do a pattern like on the top notes, you know. So you're harmonizing it with a banjo roll. Something like that, you know. And I'm just working out of those positions, like I said. 
So that'll give you a whole bunch of access to different nodes. You know, there's really no end to what you can do with that. Another thing you can do is use it to connect chords. Like if you're in, you're in G and you want to get up to your C, you know, but you want a different way to do it. So you could do something like, those positions to walk up to C. It's kind of like how a guitar player might do a bass, a bass run or something like that. Or, you know, do it... Take any of these licks and practice them in different keys. The one thing you can do with the key of D is try using the fourth string. Kind of a cool idea you can use, you know, just to get some different sounds. You know, so use those ideas to connect yourself in the key of D. You can, you know, D to G. some kind of slow triplet backup you can do so I'm going I'm pinching with my index and middle then hitting the thumb on the fifth string and then doing index and middle again so going triplet and then you start it over so you have to do it on kind of a slow song because you're gonna have to use your index and middle finger twice in a row so you're going triplet triplet can sound really cool on a slow song. Okay, so here's one more thing you can do. It's that, this is the one for G major. So there's also a shape for G minor. So it's a little different, pretty similar, but you're gonna start with them on the same frets. So eight and eight. Then you go up to 10 and 10. Then 11 and 12. Then 13 and 13. 15 and 15. 16 and 17. 18 and 19, and then 20 and 20. So that'd be like a G minor. So that's kind of a cool idea. If you, if you have a minor sounding song, you can use that pattern. And again, it's movable. So once you get it down, you know, you can do something a little faster. ideas because one I think it makes you sound like you know a lot more about the banjo than you, you might um, you know all you have to do is remember that pattern and just move it around you know so I think you can and use the same notice I'm using more or less the same fingers are trying to every time so I'm keeping that same shape so then when I move it to a new spot on the neck it doesn't feel like a totally new lick the best thing you can do with these ideas is recycle them you got to be able to use them in not only songs but in other keys Otherwise, it's just going to be this exercise that you practice this one time. And yeah, it might have helped your banjo playing a little bit. But we need to kind of work it into real songs and real ideas. And that's the way it's going to stick. So I know I threw a bunch of stuff at you really quick. But, you know, use the rewind button if you need to. And you're not supposed to be able to digest all this in one lesson. So take some time with it. Let it soak in and do a lot of experimenting. And that's the best way to kind of discover some new ideas. Okay, good luck.